All right, what's going on guys? This is Jake and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up SEO on your Shopify store. So SEO stands for search engine optimization and this determines where your website is going to show up in Google search as well as all of the other search engines. And SEO traffic is high intent traffic because people are actively searching for the keywords that your website is ranking for. So the traffic is typically of higher quality than that of other types of cold traffic. So typically SEO traffic is going to have a higher conversion rate than say something like Facebook ads. So we can break the process of SEO into three different sections. The first one being keyword research, which involves finding and choosing which keywords you wanna rank for. The second one is on-page optimization, which is optimizing your website content and performance to improve your rankings. And the third one is off-page optimization, which primarily consists of building backlinks to your website that in turn boost your site trust and authority, which will improve your rankings. So this is SEO in a nutshell, and now let's go ahead and get into how you can actually implement SEO in your Shopify store. So in order to implement SEO on our store, we're actually going to be using an app called SearchPy SEO Booster and Speed. And this is a very well-rounded all-in-one SEO app that's going to allow us to hit all three of the touch points that we just mentioned all inside of the app. So it's going to help us consolidate the overall SEO process and streamline it in order for us to get everything set up properly and quickly. So you can follow along by clicking the first link in the description and installing SearchPy on your store as well. And let's go ahead and jump into it. So once you've installed the app, this is what it's going to look like inside of your store right here. So we're going to have our menu over here on the left, which is going to have a bunch of different aspects of SEO. And some of them you'll notice that we just mentioned here, like keyword research, backlinks, etc. And then most of the sections on here are actually going to be falling into category number two, which is on page optimization. So we're gonna go through these and touch on what you want to make sure that you are absolutely setting up. So the first thing that you're likely gonna to wanna to do is come down here to keyword research and you can click on keyword explore. And this is just going to give you an idea of how many people are actively searching for specific products or keywords. So what you could do is you could take some of your products. So in this case, we have this demo gaming monitor product right here. So if I was trying to optimize this product, for example, I could just search gaming monitor here and I'll search for United States and we'll be able to see on average how many people are searching for this keyword. So we can see that gaming monitor is a pretty popular keyword with 246,000 searches. Then we have other relevant keywords as well that this is giving us such as best gaming monitor curved pc monitor top gaming monitors best gaming screen and we could go through all of these pages and continuously look for different keyword opportunities so essentially what the keyword research stage is going to entail is you're going to want to look for different keywords that you can try and optimize your products and pages for now the first one's going to be obvious so obviously for a gaming monitor you would be going for a gaming monitor but you also want to be looking for some of these keywords that have less search volume that are known as longer tail keywords so they have more words in the phrase and this is because these keywords are going to be less competitive so they're actually going to be easier to rank for so let's say you wanted to rank for best gaming monitor as well all you would have to do is maybe sprinkle the word best inside of your product description a few times and that would help to optimize the on page for this particular keyword. We have a much longer variation here. So like best computer monitors for gaming that you can see right here. And you would just wanna note down how many of these keywords are actually applicable to your particular product and try and optimize your content for that accordingly. So speaking of that, SearchPy has a keyword audit feature that will let you check how effectively you're actually doing this. So you could paste in your product page URL and type in a keyword and you could actually check to see how many times this keyword is present on your page. So this will help let you know 
whether or not your page is actually optimized or not. And then there's also a position tracking feature, which you can connect to your Google Search Console account to help to track your ranking for specific keywords right here. So that's pretty much the first category of SEO keyword research in a nutshell. You need to conduct research on your particular main keyword, find a bunch of longer tail keywords that you can optimize for as well, and then throw those keywords in. Make sure that those keywords are in your description. Now, one rule of thumb is you don't want to do what's known as keyword stuffing, which would be like, let's say taking your keyword and just doing something like this and just like putting it obsessively in here because that doesn't look good. And that's actually going to get you punished in search engines. So what you would want to do is figure out a way to organically sprinkle some of these keywords inside of your descriptions and on your pages as well. This doesn't, this isn't just isolated to your product pages. This goes for any of your pages and also for your blog post, any page on your store you're going to want to sprinkle these keywords that you find here throughout the pages. So that brings us to the next thing that we can do inside the app is they do have an AI product description right here. So we can see it will bring up our products. So we have this gaming monitor right here. So if I were to click on this, we could just generate a description automatically if we wanted to. And if we click on AI generate, we can choose to generate it with keywords. So we can put in some of the keywords we had here and you would just want to add in all your specific keywords. You would add, want to add in the brand. You could choose the writing tone and the language and you could generate the product description here. And then once it's generated, you can obviously go in and edit it yourself. So this is something that might save you some time if you don't want to go ahead and write all the descriptions yourself. So you could just take this description and actually apply it to the store now obviously in your case you're going to want to spend a bit more time on the description so for a gaming monitor for example you're probably going to want to have all of these specs in here as well so we would probably want to include that in here but for the sake of keeping this video short i'm not going to do that right here so now we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at the google page speed section here so this shows you how quick your web pages are loading and loading speed is going to be one of the most important factors for SEO and this is because it affects your bounce rate which is people that go on your site and then immediately leave. So if someone goes on your site and it doesn't load essentially instantaneously most people are going to click away so this is not only going to hurt your SEO but it's just going to hurt your overall website performance in general because people aren't going to be staying on your site. So this is going to give you a good idea of how quickly your website is loading. And if this score is low, then doing some of the other things that we're going to be showing you can help to improve this as well. So one of the things that actually has the biggest impact on page speed, if we come down here to image compression, so compressing images is going to make the file size smaller without making the quality noticeably worse. So the quality will technically be lower, but you won't be able to see the difference to the naked eye. So it's only going to improve your performance at no real tangible cost. So we could just click on compress now to go ahead and compress our images here. And it's going to sync up and do this automatically. And we can see that it's went ahead and compressed our images right here. So now that our file sizes are smaller, our pages are going to load quicker. So when it comes to optimizing page speed, if we come down here to instant page, we can choose to enable instant page as well. So what this essentially is going to do is it's pretty much going to preload your pages before somebody actually clicks on it. So this essentially means, let's say if I were to click on one of these products here, that the page would actually begin to be preloaded before I actually start to click over to this product. So it's going to improve our loading speed by a substantial margin. And we can do this just by toggling this on and that's it. So there's no extra setup that we have to do. We just toggle it on and now our pages are going to be preloaded before we actually click on them. And the last thing that we can set up here that's going to help improve our page speed is going to be AMP, which is accelerated mobile pages. So this essentially allows us to create a slightly different template known as an accelerated mobile page that website visitors can see when they visit your site on mobile. And of course, they'll be able to still view the regular version as well. 
But what you can do is you can actually click on customize and you can create the AMP version of your website here, which is going to load quicker on mobile than the entire normal website. And of course the visitor will have the option to go to the full site right here. We can just click on any of these sections to actually edit this template here. So we have our navigation, logo, etc. We have our body section in here with all of these different sections. And then we have our footer section. So what you could do is you could make your AMP version of your website slightly more lean down. I'm not going to actually set up this entire process in this video because it would get too long. However, this is the last part that you would need to set up in terms of website performance. And this is only going to affect mobile performance, obviously, but given that a large percentage of e-commerce traffic is on mobile, this is definitely something that you're going to want to set up. And you're also going to want to make sure you set it up for each different page. So we have our home page, but you can set it up for your product pages, your collections, your blogs, blog posts, and of course your blank static pages as well. So that pretty much covers everything we need to set up when it comes to page speed. Once we've done that, we'll notice a significant increase in our page speed overall. Now we can do some other things in terms of our on-page SEO. So if we come over here to SEO tags, then we click on bulk meta tags here. We can go ahead and set up meta tag rules here. So we can set up bulk meta tags for each part of our site here. So we have the home page, the product page, collection, blog, blog post, and the meta tags are essentially just what's showing up in Google. So this is going to be showing up right here. So sample preview. So we can let the app decide, which is going to be a meta title and a meta description or you can create your own template right here as well. So you could have the page title, which is going to show up here, and then your page description, which is going to show up down here. Now, since this is a demo store, I don't have a meta description set up, but I could paste in one right here, and I could just call this like demo store monitors. So for each one of these sections, you're going to want to choose whether you want to follow the automated app template, which is just going to pull content from your site already, or you can create your own right here like we just did. And if we were to go to products, we can see the same thing. So in this case, it would show the title. So it would show the meta title right here would be the page title and then the bar and then the shop name. And then the meta description, which shows down below it, would be the page description and the shop name right here. And this process would be exactly the same for each one of these sections here. A lot of the time, using let the app decide is going to be fine as long as you have all of your pages filled out. So as long as you have product descriptions and everything filled out, then you can let the app decide and you'll be good to go. If we come down here to bulk image alt next, we can choose to decide the product alt tags. So we can see here that we can create our own template or we can have all of our alt text for our images be based off of this automated selection, which would be the product title. So your alt text, if we come to the actual product page and open this up, is essentially what is showing up right here. If you click add alt text and normally your alt text, you want to describe what is actually in the photo. So if you're using product title, then that's normally fine. And adding in the alt text manually for a bunch of products, if you have a bunch, can be very tedious to it this way. So you can do it automatically right here by selecting the rule and then clicking auto add and then clicking save. And you'll notice that they're going to be doing this in the background. And we can see that now alt text has been added for three products. So this is going to save us a lot of time if we have a lot of products and don't want to set it up manually. And we can see if I came over to the product page, we can see now the alt text is showing as gaming monitor, which is the title right here. And we could choose to do the same thing here for collections and blog posts. We could just auto add all of our alt tags right here and we'd be good to go. Lastly, we can choose to manually edit our meta tags one at a time. So we could do this here on home product page one at a time right here, our collections one at a time individually and blog post individually as well. 
So if you want to go through and do everything manually one at a time, you can do that, or we can go through the automated options that we were just using. So the next thing we're gonna look at is URL control here. So the first one is going to be broken links. So broken links are something that is not only bad for user experience, but it's also going to damage your SEO. So what we can do here is we can set this up to auto scan for broken links, and we can set it to auto fix broken links. So it's going to automatically scan for any links that are broken, which essentially are links that are leading to a page on your site that doesn't exist. So a 404. And we can have this automatically fix by essentially redirecting all broken links to any page that we specify right here. So by default, it's just going to redirect to our home page, which you can leave it at that, or you can have a custom broken link page made if you want. But leaving it at the home page is typically going to be fine. So all we really have to do is enable these and we'll be fine. And then we have long URLs. So it, we can see that there aren't any URLs that are extremely long right now in this store. But if you have a store that has a lot of very long URLs, this is not going to be optimal for SEO. So you can come in here and use this feature to actually shorten some of your URLs. Next up, we have Google index. So this is something that we can do pretty simply as well. So this is just going to allow us to submit our site map to Google, which is essentially going to let Google know exactly what our website contains. So if we were to click on view your site map, you can see that our site map has four products, three pages, one collection and one blog. So we would just be sending this information to Google. So that way they know exactly what content our site creates and it's going to help them to index our site content in search results. So I could click on submit sitemap and that's all we would have to do. And then we have the schema and snippets section right here. So this is just some customization options that we can choose. So we could enable rich snippets on our site. So breadcrumbs, for example. So if we were to open this up, we can see that this is what breadcrumbs look like. And we can see that for each one of these, it's going to give us an explanation here of how these are beneficial. So this is going to be personal preference, but there are a few that are recommended here and you can enable these just by toggling them on right here. So you can go through and actually read these individual benefits to decide whether or not you want to enable these snippets on your site. But in a lot of cases, you're probably going to be using most of these snippets. And we have more different options down here, such as we can create a actual store profile to increase the chance of having Google display a knowledge panel for our site. And a knowledge panel is going to be the thing that shows up on the right side of Google search results. And essentially that's just going to help us increase our click-through rate. So in order to set this up, we would just need to upload our logo right here, add in our brand name, our reference page, our social medias, etc. So this is something I would recommend that you set up as well. We have this local business option right here. We have site links. So this is where we can show multiple links to a site in a single Google search result right here. So this could be useful if you want to have multiple collections showing up in a single search result, for example. And then you could also have different FAQs and questions showing up in a single search result as well. Not everyone will have to set up each one of these snippets, but I would say the majority of users are going to be using most of these snippets here. And most of them should be set up, especially the breadcrumbs and the store snippets right here. And you can also set up your Google business profile inside of the app here. And this is going to be beneficial if you have a local business. So if you have a physical location, then this is definitely something you're going to want to set up because this is going to help your business show up in the map results, which is going to be very effective for anyone that's searching for your business in your local area. So if you have a local physical location, you'll definitely want to set this up right here and you'll just have to sign in with your Google account to go ahead and set that up in here and you'll be able to get a report or you can potentially look into the map booster feature right here as well. And then lastly, you can take a look at the today's SEO page, which is essentially just going to give you an overview of the state of SEO in your entire store. So you'll be able to take a look at potential website issues. You'll be able to take a look at your display status on search engine, customer experience right here, 
as well as some of the recent changes you have made down here. So after doing all of that, we've pretty much done every step when it comes to on-page and keyword research. So once you've optimized everything on your store and you know which keywords you are trying to target, the last thing that you would do for improving your rankings in Google is going to be building backlinks. Now, typically you can do this by reaching out to websites inside of your niche. So relevant websites that are related to the products you're selling and seeing if you can get what's known as a guest post on their website. So you're just trying to get backlinks from as many relevant websites as possible. Now, SearchPy does have a backlink building feature as well that you can check out, which you can come in here and just select the main category of your site. And then you can come in here and search for different websites to try and get relevant backlinks on these sites here. So there's Shopify website, Shopify website options here, and then there's community websites. And we could click on create we can click on submit to try and get links on these websites here. So I would recommend reading all of the FAQs to get all of the details on how this backlink service actually works. But this is definitely something that can help you get some backlinks for your store without having to go through and search Google for relevant websites manually. This can help speed up the process for you as well. So I would definitely check this out. So overall, that's how you can set up SEO on your Shopify store. And we can do most of it inside of the SearchPy app, which is pretty easy and convenient. So definitely check out SearchPy by clicking the first link in the description down below. And with that said, if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more videos, and I'll see you guys in another one.